Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our AD Manager Plus workshop series for 2018. Firstly, thank you all for taking some time off your busy schedules and attending today's workshop session. Your participation means a lot to us here at Manage Engine. So uh, this is going to be a five work session workshop series. So in each session, we'll be looking at uh, AD Manager Plus, the functions that we su that uh, support in AD Manager Plus, and how you can make use of AD Manager Plus to uh, manage your Active Directory environment. So when we manage uh, the uh, environment, we'll be seeing how this can be done without the help of any scripts or multiple login screens. So it'll be a single console and we'll be managing all our AD Manager Plus functions from the same console without any scripts. So uh, before getting started with today's session, let me first introduce myself. My name is Naveen and I'm part of the technical team here at AD Manager Plus. Yeah, so I'm part of the technical team here at AD Manager Plus. And uh, so uh, on, in the course of these five sessions, we'll be looking at, uh, I'll just give a brief overview of what we'll be looking at. So in the first session, we'll be looking at how we can, the user provisioning process in, in Active Directory. So we, if a new user joins the organization, then we'll need to create accounts in Active Directory and uh, assign group memberships, uh, move the users to the appropriate OU, et cetera. So we'll be looking at all of this in the first session. And in our second session, we'll be looking at the next step. So first we've had user provisioning. Next, we'll be looking at how we can manage these created users. So say we want to delete a user or dis disable a user. So these functions will be handled in the second session. Then in the third session, we'll be looking at reports. So how do we get some how do we get some vital information of our Active Directory environment from AD, with the help of AD Manager Plus? And uh, after we get this, how do we perform some actions as well? And then finally, in our then in our fourth session, we'll be looking at delegation and workflow. So in, if you want to delegate some tasks to our technicians, so instead of the uh, admin performing all the active AD tasks, we can delegate some technicians the actions so they will be able to perform the actions in Active Directory and then finally in our fifth and final session we'll be looking at automation so in automation we'll see how we can automate some of the AD tasks like how do we automate the user provisioning and deprovisioning process etc okay so that was just a brief overview of what we'll be covering uh, over the course of this workshop series now let's uh, get straight into what we'll be looking at today so the topic for today is advanced Active Directory user identity and access management using smart templates and CSV. So we'll be looking at how we can provision users in Active Directory, as well as in create mailboxes for these users in Exchange, provision uh, Office 365 user and assign licenses, as well as a, a, a provision link or Skype as well. So all of this will be done in a single process. We won't be going into multiple screens to perform these actions. Okay, so these are the tasks for today. So like I said, first we'll be, we'll be provisioning our AD users as well as creating the Exchange Mailbox, the Office 365 user, and the G Suite user, as well as Skype. And uh, so we'll first look at how we, this can be done for a single user. And then after that, we'll see how this can be done in bulk. So you usually, usually don't get requests for creating single user accounts in Active Directory. It's usually done in bulk. So we'll see how this can be done with the help of AD Manager Plus and a CSV file. And we'll also look at when, at, at when creating the uh, user, we'll see how we can provision, create the user in a specified OU. So each organization will have its own uh, criteria for uh, for uh, creating users, so some we'll see how that can be done, and we'll also see how we can, uh, if we have some custom attributes configured in AD, then how those can be set as well, and if we have some standardized naming formats in our organization, then we'll see how that is done as well. So say in uh, one company, the logon name has to be of a certain format, like first name dot last name, or the display name has to be a certain format. We we'll see how that can be configured in AD Manager Plus as well, and then we'll see how we can make some organization-specific attributes mandatory without extending the AD schema. 
So only in AD Manager Plus, when the user is being created, the attribute will be kept as mandatory. So we will not be modifying Active Directory, the Active Directory schema in any way. Only in AD Manager Plus, we'll see how some attributes can be kept as mandatory. And then finally, we'll also look at how we can detect and manage forest by duplicates. So if we already have a user with a certain name, logon name, then we obviously won't want the same uh, another user to be created with the same name. So we'll see how AD Manager Plus can uh, handle these duplicates. So there are different ways in which we can do it, and we'll look at uh, those ways today. Okay, so now let's get straight into the product and get on with today's session. So uh, now this is the product's logon screen. I am, I'll be performing the actions here in my local installation. If you have a setup in your end, like a test environment, then you can make use of the test environment and perform the actions simultaneously. So it'll be easier for you to uh, understand if you're able, if you do the actions as well. For you, those of you who do not have a test environment, you can make use of the demo setup we have hosted online. So I am entering the URL for the demo setup in the chat box. So if you check your chat box, you'll see the URL for the demo setup. So it's demo.admanagerplus.com. So for those of you who do not have a test installation, you can make use of this demo setup and perform the actions as well. Okay, so uh, now let me go log into the product. So I log in. Oops. Okay. Yeah, now uh, once I log into the product, I'm greeted with the product's dashboard. So the dashboard will give me a brief overview of the different uh, objects present in Active Directory. So if I scroll down, I can see my domain details up here. And as I scroll down, I can see other details like the users, the number of users, the number of inactive users, as well as computer related reports as well. And then we also have some other reports, like the number of groups and the different security groups, et cetera. So this is just to give a brief overview of our Active Directory environment, and so basic troubleshooting as well. Now, if you look at the top, you can see various uh, tabs. So we have AD Management, AD Reports, Office 365, AD Delegation, Workflow, and Automation. So we'll be covering these tabs in, uh, in each of these workshop sessions. So today's session will be dealing with AD management. So uh, in particular, under AD management, we'll be looking at the user provisioning process. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let's get started with user creation. So first what we'll be doing is we'll be creating a user We'll be creating a single user. So for creating a single user, I will have to I go to the option. So under AD management, we go to user management and create single user. Okay. So I'm just going to create a very basic user account and show how it can be done with AD Manager Plus. We won't be going into any details like customizing any naming formats. This is just to get to know the the user creation process with AD Manager Plus. So uh, once I create, uh, click on create single user, I have this layout that's displayed to me. Now it's very simple. All I have to do is in this form, I have to give in the, the enter the attribute details and uh, yeah, I have to enter all the attribute details. And when I've given all these details, I can just click on create. Once I click create, the user will be created in Active Directory. Now, if you look at the top, we have checkboxes for Active Directory, G Suite, as well as Office 365. So if we, what this means is, if I want to create a user in Active Directory, as well as Office 365, then I just have to check the box here. Now, if I do this, then the user will be created in Active Directory, as well as Office 365. Similarly for G Suite as well. So if I have all three checked, then the user will be created in all three places. Okay, so I'll just start by uh, creating a test account. So I'll name it as test, and last name user. Okay, so you notice that some of the attributes have automatically gotten populated. So the logon name, the pre-Windows 2000 logon name, full name, etc., have automatically been given values when I enter the uh, values for first name and last name. 
So this is done based on the template that is selected here. So here there's an option to select template. So the, for now, I'm not going into much detail now. Uh, for now, we can just say that the template is used for auto-populating some of the attributes. So the logon name is a naming format, is a naming attribute. So the format that should be applied can be defined in the template. So if I hover over the field, you can see that it says first name plus last name. So this is the format that I have set in this template. So the logon name will be filled with the first name plus the last name. Okay, so similarly, we can give values for the other attributes as well, like employee ID, description, etc. And then at the bottom, we see an option to select container. So this will specify which organizational unit the user is going to be created in. So if I click on the pop-up, I get a tree view of all the OUs in my Active Directory environment. So I can just scroll through this and choose which OU I want to create the user in. So if I want to create in the IT admin USA, I click on that and then hit OK. OK, so uh, now we go. To, let's go to the next tab, that's the account tab. Now here we have other account related attributes. So we have the password attribute here. Now that is the, that's pretty important. So let's go ahead and type a password. And we have all different options. We can give a random password or we can leave it as same, same as the user's logon name or we can leave it blank as well. But I'm gonna give, type a password here. Okay, so that's the account user's password. Then we also have some other properties. Of it. So if you want the user to change the password when they log on next, then we can choose that option here. Or if you want to set, make sure that the user cannot change the password, then that option can be set from here as well. So all these, so if we want one of these to be selected, just go ahead and check that box and it will apply to the user when it is created. Okay. Now, uh, now let's continue with that other attributes. We have the member of attribute here. Now the member of attribute is probably one of the most important attributes in our Active Directory environment. What the member of uh, uh, tells us is which groups this user is a member of. Now this is how we usually give permissions to users. So if we want to give a particular user uh, full access to our Active Directory environment, we will go ahead and add that user to the administrators group. Or if you want to restrict some access, we will create a group and assign, uh, sorry, add that user to the group. So to specify which groups the user should be a member of, we can do that with the member of attribute. So if I click on the edit icon here, I get this pop-up. So I can go ahead and click add groups and search for the groups that I want this user to be a member of. So I want the user to be a member of the administrators group. So I select that option and click OK. Now if I want, I can also set this group as a primary group, but I don't really, so that option would be here. But I'm not going to be, I'm not going to do that now. So I just click OK. If you want the user to be part of other groups, just select those groups from here and it will be added. And then just click OK. Okay, so that is about member of. Now the next one is logon script. If you want to configure a logon script, or a profile path for this user, then we can just go ahead and give those values here. Similarly, for the home folder, we can specify the path for the home folder. If it's a local path, we can give it here. Or if it's a shared path, we can specify the shared path here. So I'm not going to be creating the home folder, but that can be done from here as well. <clears throat> then we have the account expires attribute. So this specifies when the user's account will expire. If it, if I'm going to select never, then that obviously means the user's account will never expire. Or I can choose a date at which the account will expire. So I can just choose a date from here, and that's when the user's account will expire. Then we have logon restrictions. So logon restriction specifies which computers the user is not allowed to access. Sorry, which uh, computers the user is allowed to log on to. So if I select all computers, that means this user can log on to all computers in Active Directory that are configured in Active Directory. But if I want to restrict the user to only a few computers, I can specify those here. So if I specify that here, it will be set in Active Directory as well. 
And then finally, in the accounts tab, we have the log on hours. Here, we just we can say which, like during what times of the day we want the user to have access to Active Directory. So if he can, whether he can log on, say if you want to restrict the user's log on hours only during business hours, then you could click on the option and then just choose the hours you want the user to have access. So uh, if, it's, if you're going to have it only during business hours, then it'd be Monday to Friday between the appropriate time. Okay, so that's about the account tab. Now let's go move on to the contact tab. Uh, so here we have some other attributes as well. So we, here we have the telephone attributes, like home phone, pager, so all these can be specified here. And then below that we have the address attributes as well. So the user's uh, address would be, would be given in this uh, field. Now if we uh, go move to the right, the top right, we have uh, the title, department, and company attribute. So we have a dropdown that has some specific, that are predefined uh, titles here. It, but you can also enter your own title. Suppose this user is going to be a manager, then you can select that here. Or if, the, if it's uh, some title not present in the dropdown, you can always go and give your own title as well. The same goes for department as well. We have some predefined departments, but if you want to add your own value, you can always do that. So that applies to the department and company. Now the final tab, now the, the final attribute in the accounts tab is the manager. Now the manager is who the user would be reporting to. So we just click on the edit icon here and uh, choose the appropriate manager. So I choose the user and click OK. OK, so uh, so far we've only looked at Active Directory and attributes. The general account and contact tab were all attributes that we will use to uh, create the user in Active Directory. Now let's move on to the Exchange tab. Now this tab is going to be used to create a enable a mailbox for this user. So if we select the mailbox enable user here, then we will be creating a mailbox for this user in our exchange server. So we won't, we'll be creating an Active Direct user as well as enabling a mailbox in exchange. So we just have to select the mailbox enable option here at the top. Now we just, now we can select, we can configure our exchange settings from here. So the three mandatory attributes are the mail server, the mailbox store and email alias. So let me just go ahead and give those values. Now AD Manager Plus will uh, automatically uh, retrieve these values from the exchange environment. So we don't, so you as the user don't have to manually enter any server values. These are taken directly from the exchange environment as well as the, ma the mail server, as well as the mailbox store. And similarly, we can give uh, values for the other attributes as well. So if we scroll down, we see that there are some storage limits, then delete items, delete item retention time, things like this. So all of these attributes, uh, according to your requirement, you can give the values. And when you're done, we, it, uh, all these will be configured in Exchange. Okay, uh, and uh, then we can also configure a remote mailbox for this user. If we have a, a hybrid environment and we want to enable a remote mailbox in Office 365, that can be done from here as well. So we just select the enable remote mailbox option and give provide the remote routing address and it will create the remote mailbox for us. So, so I'm not going to be, so I won't be creating the mailbox enable user here. Uh, I'll be going with no mail for now. Then the next tab is the terminal tab. So if we can give our terminal service and, uh, attributes here. So again, it's, it's like before, whatever attributes we wish to give values to, we just enter those here and we, continue, and we can continue. <laughs> okay, now the next tab is for uh, Skype or link. If we have, uh, if you want to enable Skype for our user, then that can be done from here as well. So again, it's similar to the exchange tab. We just choose the correct option, like whether you want LCS or OCS or whether Skype or link. So that we choose the appropriate uh, radio button at the top and fill in the attributes below. So we just have to choose the link servers and give the SIP URA format. After this, the link will be enabled for this user as well. 
Okay, so uh, let me just do a recap. So, so far we've seen how we can create, uh, uh, provide attributes for the users in Active Directory as well as in Exchange and for uh, Link. So uh, if we were to do this with the native Active Directory tools, it would be in three steps. You would first have to create a user in Active Directory and then you'd have to log into the Exchange server, go to the Exchange Manage Admin Center and enable a mailbox for the user as well. And then after that, you'd have to log into the link uh, admin center and enable link for this user. So you'd have to log into three, diff you have three different screens and to perform all these actions. But here, we can perform all of them from a single console by just navigating to the different tabs. So those are the three. Now let's go on with Office 365 and G Suite as well. So after the custom attributes tab, there's a Office 365 tab as well. Now, like I said, if we check the Office 365 checkbox at the top, then the user will be created in Office 365. So here the mandatory attribute is the user creation method. We have to specify whether the user should be created with directory sync enabled or without directory sync. So what directory sync means is if whether the Active Directory account and the O365 account are to be synced. So if we want to, if we want these two accounts to be synced, then we choose the sync enable. But if we want them to be as two standalone accounts, then we would go with the option without directory sync. So here I want that I'm, I'm sync, here I am syncing the accounts. So I go with direct the sync enabled. And then uh, we can choose a license as well. So we have all the licenses available in our act in our Office 365 environment here. And I just go ahead and choose the appropriate one. So I can just choose which license I want to apply. And we can also uh, configure the group membership from here as well. We just click on edit here and we choose the Office 365 groups we want the user to be a member of. And here at the bottom, we have some other exchange uh, online attributes. So if we're going to have a mailbox user in exchange online, we can provide the email alias as well as the litigation and in-place archive details here itself. So we if I choose on enable litigation hold, it asks me for a duration and I can do that from here. Okay, so that is how we configure Office 365 as well. Now let's go to the final G Suite. So if we want to enable a user in G Suite as well, then we will have to, uh, we can go to the G Suite tab and uh, choose the groups the user should be a member of. So the groups will be listed here. We just choose the appropriate groups as well as the G Suite organizational unit as well. So we just click on change and choose the appropriate value from here. Okay, so now we've given values for all our at attributes. We have created, we're going, we've given our Active Directory values, our Exchange mailbox values, our link, uh, link server details, Office 365, as well as G Suite. So if I click on create, it will create the user in all it will, uh, in all five of these places. So I click on create. Okay, so I click on create now. So now the product is communicating with Active Directory and creating a user there. Then it will go to uh, uh, exchange, enable the mailbox, and then go to link, enable link, create the Office 365 user, assign the license, and finally, it will also create the G Suite user as well. Okay, so it uh, looks like there was some error by creating the Office 365 user. So it says that the usage location is not provided. So if you're going to choose a license under the assign license option for Office 365, we have to provide the country attribute. So that will be taken as the usage location in Office 365. So that's why I'm getting an error here. So under the contact tab, we have the country attribute. So this is mandatory for creating a licensed user in active in sorry in Office 365. Okay. Uh, I see that there's some questions that have been that you've asked. Uh, I'll try and I'll definitely answer those questions after the webinar is over. So just please hold on to your questions after the session is over. I'll uh, be, I'll still be here. You can, I'll answer your questions then.
Okay, so uh, now we've seen how we can create a single user in Office 360, sorry, in Active Directory. Now, uh, let's see how this can be done in bulk. Like I said, for doing this in bulk, we'll be making use of CSVs, CSV file. So first, let's go to the AD Management tab on the top. So under User Management, we have the option to create bulk users. So let me click on that. Yeah, so what it asks me immediately first is to import a CSV file. So uh, before importing, let me just show you a sample of a CSV file. So now this would be, is a sample CSV file that I've already created. It just contains some of the basic attributes that are required for creating the Active Directory user. So at the top, we, so the first line is going to be the header for my CSV file. So this specifies what the attribute, what attributes I'm going to be specifying here. So the first attribute will be given name. The second one is SN and the one after that is password. So if I go to my next line, so the next, the corresponding lines uh, are values. So the first one is given name. So the given name of the first user is John. The SN is uh, Smith and the password is password at one, two, three. And similarly, the next line corresponds to the second user. Now you might wonder why I have given given name here. So given name corresponds to the first name of the user and SN is the last name. So the reason I haven't given first name here in, but given name is that the given name is the LDAP attribute for the first name. So what that means is, so Active Directory will uh, understand only a certain language. So that is LDAP. Now, if I want to specify the first name for a user in Active Directory, I cannot tell that I, I cannot mention it as first name. I have to say, I have to use the LDAP attribute called given name here. Similarly, SN is the LDAP attribute for the last name. If I want to tell Active Directory that the user's last name is Smith, I have to say SN is Smith. I can't use last name here. So this is first name and this is last name. Similarly, password is a password as well. Now, if you want a list of all the LDAP attributes that are, uh, 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 sorry, that are supported by AD Manager Plus, we have that in our help document. So if we go back to the AD Manager Plus console, we, at the top right, we have a link that says help. So if I click on help, I get the help document. So what I'm going to do is I want to see what CSV, what headers are supported in the CSV file. So I open the help doc. I go to CSV import. Now under CSV import, I want to create users using CSV. Now in this document, I have a list of LDAP attributes supported by AD Manager Plus. So I click on that. So this, and it provides me with the list of all the LDAP attributes that are supported. So as you can see, the given LDAP name for a given name corresponds to first name in Active Directory. So, sim so like this, I can provide any values I want in my CSV file. If I want to give a value for the office attribute, then in my CSV header, I'll provide the physical delivery office name. So the next, I provide it like this and the value would follow. So office one. So it will be like this. So if, uh, if there's any attribute that you would like to configure in the CSV file itself, just go to the document, check the LDAP name from this list, add this to the CSV file header and provide the values for in the corresponding lines. So it's pretty simple like that. So this is our CSV file. Now after our CSV, so once you create the CSV file, we can go back to the product and click on the import CSV button. So if I click on this, I have to, I just have to navigate to my file. So this is my CSV file and I click OK. Okay, so uh, you'll see that the given name SN as well as the physical delivery office name are all given here. So those values are taken directly from the CSV. Now, but you'll also notice that there's some other values like user principal name, SAM account name and display name. I, I did not provide values for this in my CSV file directly, but they have automatically been populated in the, when I imported my CSV file. So like I said before, this is done with the help of the template here. So 
So templates basically help in auto automatically populating some values in our CSV file. Sorry, in automatically populating some values when we're creating the user. We can also set some default values. Say we want the user to be created only in a particular OU or have only some group membership. All of that can be uh, set in the template. So let's go ahead and see what a template is and how we can create it. So to create a template, we first go to the AD management tab. Now under AD management, we have user templates. So I click on user creation templates. Now I want to create a new template. So I click on the create new template option here. Okay, so now uh, you'll notice that a layout very similar to the user creation uh, layout is loaded for me. So, but it's different. The, uh, you'll notice that logon name has some value given here. Like first name plus last name and the pre-Windows 2000 name, pre-Windows 2000 name has a value as well. So uh, let's uh, quickly go through these uh, naming format values. Okay, like I said, the, the logon name, all these attributes are automatically populated. Now this is specified by the naming format that is selected here. So uh, I can choose whichever naming format I want. So if I want the logon name to be like first, first name plus last name, then I can choose that format. Or if I want it to be last name plus first name, it would be, I can just choose that. So now if I were to make use of this template and during user creation, then if the first name of the user is John and the last name is Smith, then the logon name would be populated as smith.john at domain.com. So uh, let me choose another one. So if I choose first name dot middle name dot last name, then we can see a sample here. So this corresponds to the first name as John, middle name as K and the last name as Smith. Now say, uh, so these are the uh, default naming formats that we provide uh, in pre-installed. Say there's a format that uh, is not here that you wish to create. Uh, say uh, like first name, uh, like you want the first two letters of the first name and then the last name as well. If, so if you can always create your own naming format. So to create your own naming format, you can click on this link here. So let's see how we can create a naming format. So here this in under admin tab, we have, we've gone to the naming formats option and I'm going to create a new naming format. So I click on new naming format. I just specify a name for this. So it's going to be the first two letters of my first name followed by my last name. So let me just name it as test format. Okay, so uh, now I have to add the, now I have to create the format. So what I want is I want the first name and the first two characters. And then I click add. So this says that the first part of the naming format will be the first two letters of the first name. Then after that, I just directly add the last name. So this will give me a naming. So if I were to give a, if the first name as John and the last name as Smith, then if this naming format were applied, then the value would be J.O. Smith. So let me save this and you'll see how it can be used in the template. So you'll see that the test format has been saved at the bottom. Now let's see how this is used in our template. So we go to AD management, user creation templates and I create a new template. Okay, so uh, previously, uh, so by default, we have the first name plus last name. So I'm going to use my test format. So once I select my test format, the sample given is shown as J-O dot, J-O Smith. So this is the first two letters of my first name followed by the last name. So similarly, we can provide naming formats for the other attributes as well. So I'll just go ahead and give some naming formats for them. And then we can also specify uh, other attributes. So templates don't not only allow us to specify, provide values for naming formats, we can also give some default values as well. If we want to give a default description, then we can provide that here. Now, if this template is applied, 
this will be the description that is set for the user similarly other values can be set as we can give some other default values as well so i want so if this template is used i want to create the user only in a particular ou so i can make that selection from here so say i want to create the user in the sales department ou so i choose that from here and click okay <coughs> Similarly, we have we have to give we can give other values as well. So I'm just going to mention the member of here. So I click add, and let's say we want to add the user to the sales department group. So I'm going to set that as a primary group as well, and remove the domain users group. Okay. So now I'm just now I can all I have to do is provide a name for my. Okay, so I just had to provide a name for my template. So let's keep it as test template. I can put, and there's an option for a description as well. So I'm just going to, so now I'll just save the template. Save. Okay, so now a template has been created called test template. In here, I specified the, some naming formats as well as some default values for my uh, container as well as group memberships. Now this uh, template can be used in single user creation as well as bulk user creation. So uh, let's start with single user creation. So I go to single user creation and from the select template dropdown, I choose test template. Okay. Now I can start entering my values. So I give John. Okay, so you'll notice that the values are different. Previously, the logon name was getting populated as John Smith, and uh, all the other naming formats were also done accordingly. Now it's taking the value specified in the template. So in the template, I said that the pre-Windows 2000 logon name should be last name dot first name. So that value is taken here. Similarly, you'll notice that the container is not has not selected the default users OU, but it is going to the sales department. Now let's uh, look at our member of as well. So on the accounts tab, you'll notice that the member of is also selected as the sales department. Now, if I create this user, it will uh, the appropriate values will be selected. So, uh, and this is not limited only to Active Directory attributes. We can select any attribute that is visible here in the template. If you want to predefine some of the exchange attributes, those can definitely be set in the template. Same goes for Office 365 as well as for Link and G Suite. So if we have any values that we would like to give by default, those can be specified in a template. So the, an important use case would be uh, you might have uh, different users in different uh, departments. So the person in the HR department would have some permissions in Active Directory, whereas the person in the IT, in the admin, IT department would probably have different permissions. So uh, what you could do is, you will create a template for the HR department, specifying some groups, specifying an OU, and maybe also the manager as well, and uh, create a template for that. And the IT department uh, template would be different. We have a different set of groups and a different OU, etc. So now, if we are going to create a user in the IT department, all we have to do is uh, select the appropriate template from here, the IT department template, and then uh, give our first name and last name. So it's very simple. We didn't have to manually enter the values for all of these uh, attributes. So these can be specified in the template. Description, office, etc. these are all really common attributes. So you don't have to go ahead and enter a value every time. You can specify it in the template, which is a one-time job. And then every time you're creating a user, just auto-populate it, auto-populate it using the template. Okay, so uh, that's how it can be done for single user creation. Now let's see how it is done in bulk. So for that, I go to AD management, user management, and create bulk users. Okay, so the first step, like I said, is to import our CSV file. So I choose the file, and I click OK. So now the now these values have all gotten populated based on the system default template. Now, if I change it to the test template we created before, so 
So now the member of has changed. So before it was, uh, it had showed the users OU. Now it has been changed to the sales department. Similarly, the primary group is shown as sales department. And the other one we mentioned is the container. So the container is also going to be set as the uh, sales department OU. Okay. Uh, now this will be uh, this is fine if all the imported users need to use the same template. Suppose uh, we're going to create multiple users in the IT department, then we can have a CSV file for all of those users, import that CSV file, and then choose the appropriate template here. But say we have uh, multiple users in the same file that need to go to different departments. Like the first user should be in the IT department, and the second user needs to be in the sales department. So in this case, it is not necessary to have two different CSV files. We can have a single CSV file, but mention the template name in the CSV. So I add a template name and just mention that as well. So now this user is going to be created with the uh, sales department template. And this one is going to be created with the IT department template. So let's import the CSV file and see how the values are populated. So I import a file, choose file, and click on CSV. And now I click OK. OK, so uh, let, let's see what values are. Now the OU name, as you'll see, is specified. The first one is sales department, and the second one is IT admin USA. Similarly, the member of and primary group ID are, specific, are taken from the template directly. So now if you have multiple, more than two users, then you can obviously uh, add those to the CSV, specify the template name in the CSV, and, and create the users here. So let me click on create users. So now the users are being created in Active Directory. Now you might ask, if I specify, if I go, if I mention the template name in the CSV file, and also choose a template here, so uh, the users have been successfully created. Now the, the first one has been created in the sales OU, and the other one in the IT admin OU. Okay. Uh, like I was saying, what I was saying before is, what if we specify a template name in the CSV file, and also choose a template here? Then which one will be given priority? What we do is the template name that you give in the CSV file will always be given priority. If you mention a template name in the CSV file, we will take that into consideration. If there's no template header, then whatever is mentioned, whatever is selected here will be taken. Okay, uh, uh, also uh, in this example, I've only created the user in Active Directory. I, it is possible to do the, to create the user in Exchange as well. So in the template, if I had, uh, enable the mailbox, then the ma mailbox should be enabled for the user in Exchange as well. Okay, and uh, it's not just limited to Exchange. Uh, like I said, we can do it for Office 365 link as well as G Suite. So we just have to create a template with all of these attributes specified, create a simple CSV file with the basic attributes, so in this CSV, I've just given the give the first name and the last name. Even the physical, even the office name isn't required here. I just spec I just give these three values and a template name as well. And I can create the user in all five locations. So I that is that feels much easier than writing a really complex script that would create the Active Directory user, then another script to enable the exchange mailbox and so on. Or the other alternative would be to log in to each uh, admin center and perform the appropriate action. Instead of doing all of this, we can create a template that specifies all the values. That's just a one-time operation. Create a very basic CSV file, and then with the help of these two, create the users in bulk. So at that time, we provision the users in all the locations. So we can call this like as 360-degree office uh, user provisioning. Okay, uh, now let, let me just quickly get back to the task that we had for today. So we've seen, oops, so we've seen how we can 
provision a user in Active Directory, Exchange, Office 365, G Suite, and Skype from a single window. And then we saw how to create Active Directory accounts in bulk with the help of a CSV. And when we were creating the user, we simultaneously specified the OUs as well as uh, the group memberships. And we saw how to standardize naming formats for users across the organization. If the display name is supposed to be of a certain format, we can create that format in the admin tab and make use of that in the template. So in the template, we can specify that the naming, <laughs> that the display name must be of this format. Then whenever the template is used, that it will always have that format. So now uh, let's go to the last three topics. We're going to see how we can uh, set values for custom attributes and how to check for, uh, make certain attributes mandatory and how do we check for forest wide duplicates. Okay, so for this uh, again, we have to go to the template. All of these can be configured in our user creation template. Uh, I see there's a question regarding copying user attributes. Yes, that can be done. I'll show you how that can be done now. So uh, let's uh, go back to creating a new template. So in this, uh, let me first show how we can copy user attributes. Say we have a user account that is already created in Active Directory and that has all the required uh, information. Like we want to have the same member of the same manager, the same OU, etc. So if I have a user like this, in the create template page, I choose the copy user attributes option. So I click on this. So the tooltip tells me to copy an existing user settings and use them to create a new user. So let's see how that's done. So I click on this option and choose, my, choose the appropriate user. So I click on select attributes. Now it's loading which attributes are to be taken into this template. So we do not uh, copy all these user attributes, whichever ones we require, we can choose. So under general, we can take the employee ID description, etc. Here, I'm just going to take the container name. Now under account tab, I have other options as well. I just want to copy the member of attribute and I don't want to copy anything from contact. So if you expand the different tabs, you can see what all attributes can be copied. So in this template, this is, a very, this is a very basic template. I'm just going to copy the OU name as well as the member of attribute and I click OK. So only these will be taken. OK. So uh, this user is part of the domain users group only. So let's try with a different user. Uh, okay, so John Smith is part of the sales department. So I just, again, just choose which all attributes I would require. Click OK and apply. So you'll see the member of has been changed to the sales department. Similarly, whichever attribute you require, that can be copied from here as well. So that is how we can copy some existing users attributes directly into the template. Now, if I make use of this template, it will use the attributes of that existing user in Active Directory. Okay, now uh, let's see how we can manage forest wide duplicates. If uh, if I going to, if I have an existing user called John Smith, then I obviously don't want another user with the same uh, logon name. So how do I manage this? So for this, uh, in the template, there's an option called enable drag and drop. So let me enable this. So if I do this, I can move uh, move the attributes around. So the templates are very customizable. This isn't a fixed layout which you have to follow. If you want some of the attributes to be moved around. Say you want the password, password attribute to be present in the general tab. That can be done. So I just click on delete here. So I delete the password attribute. So once the attribute is deleted from the layout, it is displayed on the in the field tray on the left. So now I just go to the general tab. 
I click on password and bring it back. So now the password, if I click on done, now the password attribute will be present in the general tab of the template. Similarly, uh, any all these attributes can be moved around. You can customize it to your requirement. Also, if you do not want an attribute to be present in the template, say you're going to create a template and delegate it to the HR. In that case, you may not want to provide certain, uh, maybe you don't want them to have access to the exchange tab. In that case, you can delete an entire tab like this. Like So if I click on the delete option, I can delete the entire tab. Or if I want to delete individual attributes alone, that too can be done. So if, I, if I don't want to give access to the office attribute, I just hover over the little pencil icon here and click on delete. If I click on OK, it gets removed from the template. Now it's not it's not deleted completely. I can always bring it back by dragging it from the field tray into the layout. OK, now let's see how we can manage the duplicates. So say I don't want to have, I want to handle duplicates proactively for the logon name. So I go, I hover over the logon name option and click on edit. So at the bottom of this pop-up, we have an option called prevent duplication. So let me check on check this option and I can choose the, the whether it should prevent at the domain level or the forest level. So I choose forest level and now I have options to correct the duplicates. I can so currently the naming format selected is first name plus last name. So I can either change the naming format or I can have an option to append numbers or the final option is not create the user at all. So if a duplicate is found in Active Directory. If the op naming format option is selected, then a different naming format will be set, set. So instead of first name plus last name, I'll create it as last name dot first name. So this is one option. Or we can append numbers. So append numbers means it would be John Smith. Uh, John Smith 2 would be the new user's account. Or if we want to prevent the user creation or uh, uh, as it is, then we choose the do not create op object option. So this uh, this will when it when we create the sorry when we click on the create user button at that time it will check whether a duplicate is present in Active Directory. Okay, so that so that's how we can check for duplicates. Now let's see how we can make some attributes as mandatory. So say the, so currently the employee ID field is not mandatory, but the, if the users must have an employee ID, then again, we can just hover over it, click on edit. So under options, in, under the security options, we have an option to make it mandatory. So if I click on this and hit done, now the a red asterisk is present next to the employee ID. This means that the employee ID is now a mandatory field. If I try, if I use this template, and try to create a user without the employee ID, the product will throw an error saying that employee ID is mandatory, please provide some value. So this is only making employee ID mandatory in the in AD Manager Plus. We have not done anything into the Active Directory schema. And this is only locally in the product. When creating a user, if the value is not given, it will, it will throw an error. If we do not do anything in Active Directory directly here. Okay, so uh, finally, let's also look at how we can configure custom attributes. So uh, previously, I, would sk I skipped the custom attributes tab. Let's go to the custom attributes tab now. So here we have options to configure custom attribute. So if we have a custom attribute in Active Directory, I can I have to first add that to the product. So if there's any attribute here in the layout that we that you are using in Active Directory, that is sorry, sorry. Let me start it. So if there's any attribute in Active Directory that you do not find in this layout, then you can add that to the layout here. So for that, I click on add additional attribute. So I give the LDAP name. And the attribute value as well. So now a new uh, field is present called extension attribute 10 and the value is given as 10. So this will be created only in the template. Now in this template, there's an additional attribute called extension attribute 10. 
and its value can be specified here. So I can always edit the value and give some other thing here. Okay, so similarly, if we have some other attribute, then we can add more, we can add as many attributes as we require. But there's no restriction on the number of custom attributes that can be configured in the product. Okay, well, I guess that concludes all the topics for today's discussion. Uh, um, so let's just go a quick overview of what we saw today. So we started off by seeing uh, 360 degree user provisioning. We, what we did is we created a user in Active Directory, enabled the exchange mailbox, uh, enabled link for the user, and then also created the corresponding account in Office 365 as well as in G Suite. Now we did all of this from a single window without the help of any scripts. So we had a template and a CSV file and with the help of these two, we were able to create the users in all these places. So yeah, so we saw how this could be done in bulk as well. Then when creating the user, we saw how we could specify different OUs and groups for these users. Then we saw how, we also looked at how we could uh, add custom attributes. So in the template, we can add a custom attribute and provide a value. So any attribute that is not present in the layout there, that AD Manager Plus provides, we, uh, they can be configured as custom attributes and, uh, pro and provide values for them as well. Then we also saw how we could standardize naming formats. So if we have a naming attribute that always has to follow a certain format, then we saw how this can be done with the help of AD Manager Plus. And then we saw in the template again, how we can make certain attributes as mandatory without extending the AD schema. So only locally in AD Manager Plus for that template, the attribute will be mandatory. We can always create another template in which the attribute is not mandatory. So the mandatory attributes dif will differ based on the template. And then we also saw finally how we could detect and manage forest wide duplicates. So uh, if we encounter a duplicate while creating the user, we saw three different options. We could either uh, apply a different naming format or append numbers to the value, or we could prevent user creation as it is. Okay, so that concludes today's workshop session. Thank you again. I'd like to thank you all for taking some time off your schedules and uh, attending today's workshop session. Now our next session will be conducted tomorrow again at the same time, that is 11 a.m. Eastern time. And we'll be looking at how we can modify and manage our users. So today we looked at the provisioning process. Tomorrow we'll be looking at how we can manage the users in Active Directory. So we'll be looking at managing Active Directory attributes, exchange mailbox attributes, as well as how we can modify the licenses for our Office 365 users. Uh, I'll be staying back. I'll still be here. I'll be answering your questions. So if you have any questions, please ask them in you can use the chat box to ask your questions i'll be answering them now so uh, thank you all for your time today you all have a great day thank you mm -hmm.